Happy Thursday, everybody. Thank you so much for downloading or streaming the Be Our Guest podcast. So glad you're here for the replay of Sunday night's live call-in show. That was Sunday night, April 28th, 2024. Scotty G joined me, and we took your calls for the hour, and we got some great calls about, well, we had a great trip report over, uh, well, the first caller, Stephanie from Virginia, called in and gave two quick Thoughts on uh, a trip to Walt Disney World where she took down a bunch of uh, band kids, over 100 kids, and how they got to make some memories while they were down there. And her first trip to Disneyland and what she thought about that destination. And kind of the word she came up with was easy. So we talked about that as well. We also got a question and a call about taking your kids out of school for cruises so we had a nice discussion about that. Wade also called in from Nebraska, and we talked about the pros and cons of staying at a Fort Wilderness cabin over a run Disney weekend and the transportation variables that you might have to think about and all those kind of things. So lots of discussion was had on tonight's show, but those are three of the big ones. So lots of Disney talk coming your way right now. As always, our show is brought to you by the Magic for Less Travel. We'd love to help you plan the next Walt Disney World, Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line, or Adventures by Disney Vacation for no additional cost to you. Check out all the details today over at themagicforless.com. Please also use our Amazon affiliate link when you shop online. That one extra click supports everything we do throughout the year. It's brguestpodcast.com slash Amazon. And thank you again to our Patreon supporters you guys make all these shows possible. We could not do this without you, so thank you so very much for that. And our Patreon supporters get a bonus show. It's called Mike in the Midwest. If you'd like to support us, it's just $5 a month, and you get a bonus podcast every week. Come on over, patreon.com slash Be Our Guest Podcast. Ready to take a trip to the world? You found the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. This is where your memories come front and center on our podcast stage. Well, hey, hey, everybody, welcome to the BOGP Open Line for Sunday night, April 28th, 2024. I'm your host, Mike Rallman from BeOurGuestPodcast.com and one of the senior agents over at The Magic for Less Travel. Happy Sunday night to you. Hope you're having a great weekend. We are getting ready to take your calls for the next hour at 407-413-9395. That's 407-413-9395. 9395. Nine, We're going to have a good time tonight talking Disney. This is a show that is up to you. So you let us know what you want to talk about. But the man of the hour, he is going to be our first round draft pick. With the first pick in the BOGP open line, we go to Lansing, Michigan, home of, well, Detroit, Michigan, home of 700,000 crazy NFL fans. That set a record this weekend. We have Scotty G. What's up, Scott? How about that? How about not to go all sports, you know, but like how about <laughs> how about the state of Michigan showing up for that draft? Dude, like, that, that was, was crazy. So cool for me. By that the way, so cool your your Detroit see. Lions have half of St. Louis on uh, a lot of St. Louis know, kids right? and Mizzou people. Yeah, I mean, dude, you're yeah. that's my team. Like Laporta's over there and all that. Oh, yeah. yeah, like totally. Like, yeah, but look, I mean, the Lions are gonna. I mean, I've been a lot diehard Lions fan my whole life. It's just kind of funny to see like people from like all over now, like in on them. But like, it was very cool to see like all the hype. It was an awesome Saturday too, because the Tigers had a like a like an evening game after the draft. So like, I know their game against the Royals or or Jam House, and they had like a six run eight to uh to take the lead they won the series so it was a good weekend for detroit sports for sure i felt very happy for you because you're you know you got one of those towns that's kind of bounce back right you had a little rough time there detroit you know kind of like st louis like you know, urban areas have seen mm -hmm. better days but you have a re revitalization and basically it's because of sports you know sports yeah. has led, led the way so that's cool for sure for sure a awesome town i love detroit and uh yeah but happy weekend play some golf today Shout out to my daughter. She just finished her fifth show for this musical they just did at school. It was on Once Upon a Mattress. Uh, yeah, but well done by the Oakmus Wolves. Yeah. Emily was in the pit orchestra. It was just entertaining to see Mike. Just love our seeing our kids doing awesome things. So that was a fun weekend for sure. It's awesome when our kids are more talented than we are. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and smarter, too. Yeah. 100% there. That is exactly right. All right. We have our first call tonight at 407-413-9395. We're just jumping in. Because last weekend, so many calls. So, hey, we're just picking it up right where we left off. Who's our first caller tonight? Hey, this is Stephanie from Springfield, Virginia. Hey, Stephanie out in Springfield, Virginia. How are things going? 
uh, Scott, that is Stephanie from Springfield. <laughs> we're trying. We're I don't trying. know if it's with a PH we're, or not. We're trying we something. We're trying to be fancy tonight, <laughs> Stephanie. That's why we're, he's, you're our first kind of kind of. Here we go. We already messed it up. I know. Yep. yep. <laughs> we'll have it right by the end. We'll of get, this We'll figure this out. We're trying to get fancy, Stephanie. No. So what's going on? We're glad you called in. What's on your mind? Well, I thought you guys might like to hear. I've had two wildly different Disney experiences this year. So back in January, I chaperoned my daughter's high school band to Disney World. And then uh, the week before Easter, uh, my family of three, we had our first trip out to Disneyland. Both so we coasts. went from, you know, hundreds of kids to just us. So. So did you lose anybody on the band trip or did anybody, uh, let's see, get uh, disciplined or anything like anything crazy happened with the kids down at World? No. And that's the amazing part. I had (laughs) nothing to do with planning, so I don't know what that nightmare was like. But (laughs) just from the chaperoning part of things, everybody made it. Everybody came home in one piece. We didn't lose anybody. Nothing like the kids were great. And it was, you know. I'm a Disney planner. We've got things down to a T, but you know, that doesn't matter. You're in high school. You're with your hundreds of best friends. They all waited in line two hours for like, it's a small world. Nobody cared. They had a great time. So. Yeah, I mean, they're with their friends or Walt Disney world. They all have their phones. I mean, you know, what could be better? You know, it's seriously, oh, no. nobody it was, ended up in jail. They had a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm a former teacher, you know, I got cut right to the chase. So, but so on that trip though, did you see anything that kind of, because seriously, sometimes, not sometimes, all the time, if you stand back and you watch, you know, kids that age get a bad rap because you think they're always doing the wrong thing. But then you see these moments that I think that we don't see all the time. Did you see anything like that? Because a lot of times those high school kids can, can become seven and eight year olds at places like Walt Disney World. You know, the number of goofy ear baseball caps that were purchased was kind of astounding. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Well, Scott, you're you're you a parent know, of, a, of a band kid. That'd be cool for, you know, from your perspective to do something yeah, like that. Yeah, absolutely. And our band, I think, is thinking about doing a, a Hawaii trip. Oh, my year. God. Like, I can't imagine, like, the logistics <laughs> behind that. But we'll see. Yeah, no. That and then, yeah, the number of kids that also had like the pocket money to build actual lightsabers and sort of the mm. logistics of getting those home in one piece. But oh, yeah. uh, no, they had so much fun. They were real, they're a good group of kids. They had fun. I mean, did, were they too loud? Yes. Did they run? Of course. Mm. Did they eat more than humanly possible? Absolutely. But I'm like, it's Disney. That's what you do, right? Yeah, that's exactly right, what you exactly. do. I wish I had pocket money for a lightsaber, and I'm not even in, you know, I'm. A little past high school, but I, I still haven't made a lightsaber myself. So those kids are doing pretty well. <laughs> yeah, no. So that was a great trip. Yeah. So we had a lot of fun. But then we uh, went from that to our first family trip into uh, Disneyland. And that was just, that was amazing. So what, I, amazing. I, so what, what, maybe what surprised you or what was your, your favorite thing about, because we have, the thing is, I, and I'm not saying that like I had anything to do with this, but it seems like when I kind of went out there and started, you know, saying like, I mean, I I've fallen in love with the place. Right. And a lot of people over the past couple of years have kind of taken that plunge to get out there, you know, and say, you know, I think it had more to do with like the shutdown and like how long Disneyland was closed. And people are like, if not now, then when I think that's more of what it is. And I think I'm also keenly aware of people's first trips because I, I was in that boat and, and I love it so much, but what did you find that you that maybe was unexpected or that that really stuck out to you that this this is Disneyland for me? You know, I think, and I know everybody says, oh, it's a locals part, you know, that whole thing. But I think the biggest feeling we had was that it was so relaxed. Like it was crowded. There were people there, but it didn't feel like it was as stressful as Disney World. Like, and I don't know why that would have been. I mean, you know, it's the the genie system. You're still kind of crisscrossing the park to get to places. But, like, everything was so much more relaxed. You know, like, the characters were fantastic. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like there were suddenly, you know, 80 people in line to meet a character. Like, characters just kind of appeared. And everybody was just kind of like, oh, yeah, look, it's Peter Pan. And everybody just kind of went about their thing. And it was just, 
I don't know, that feeling of just kind of being relaxed. Everybody was having a great time. But that's what I really liked about it. Yeah, Scott, I mean, that's exactly, you know, I did the trip with, with Scott out there two out of my three times there. And it's why I tell him all the time. It's like two words I say, it's chill and it's easy. Like it, yeah. it it's just, yeah. it's so laid back out there. For sure. It's, and Thank speaking you. of being laid back, Jason's got a question in the chat about, do you recommend Genie Plus at Disneyland? And that's 100% yes. <laughs> like, because I think because it is so chill and laid back, not everyone is like purchasing it as much as you see at Walt Disney World. So Stephanie, I'm curious, did you use, uh, did you say you used Genie Plus or did you use it at all? Because I think we, it's great out there. We, you know what, we definitely use Genie Plus and I'll tell you, so we, we rope dropped, but we went to Disneyland and we went to DCA the second day. We rope dropped both, so we were there nice and early. So we definitely like, and we actually took the monorail into Disneyland, so it spit us out like right at um, Space Mountain. So we walked right on Space Mountain, but then we had a Genie Plus that we used later. So we rode it twice. You know, we awesome. walked onto Matterhorn and then rode it again later. So that part was fantastic. Um, it was nice too because we ended up meeting up with my niece and nephew who are in college out in California. And that was easy. Like we linked our passes. We all were like, you know, Hey, you know, 3 PM, we're all going to meet here and ride this ride together. And like that made it super easy, but then people split up and kind of did their own things in the, in between times. So yeah, I would definitely recommend it. Cause yeah, we rode everything at least twice, if not more, just because there wasn't like a super long line for things. It was fantastic. That and you're awesome. you're not traveling between attractions far. You know what I'm saying? Like you you're you're just not you're not walking very far to get from one attraction to the next. And another thing too is like for the most part you can you can eat on counter service restaurants too. So you're not like logistically having to to juggle as many variables with. Well, we got to worry about like can we schedule an ADR for this or that? I mean, you know, we, you get ADRs of places like you know Storytellers Cafe over at Grand Californian, or maybe Lamplighter over at DCA, or you know what have you. you could you, there's places to sit down and eat, but I think you're you're probably more fifty fifty on the counter service, you know, table service ratio out at Disneyland, where I think you might sit more towards table service at Walt Disney World. Oh, just a just a uh, yeah, I would agree, and just even you know, like the counter service was easier with just you know the mobile ordering, like everything was just I don't know easier, worked better, was quicker. I don't I don't know what the magic word is, but it was definitely just so so chill, so relaxed. Our second day, we were at uh, DCA, and we actually stayed at Pixar Place and had that sort of back entrance into the park. So we went through the security that's there. We were the only people there at rope drop, like nobody walked right in. What's right there. Goofy's uh, sky school. Mm -hmm. the, they let us ride. The CMs let us ride three times in a row. Oh my. Wait, ho, 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 wait, 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 wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> they, they, they let you or they, cause that thing beat the crud out of me. I rode that thing one time and I said, Lord have mercy. Let me off this thing. Cause that thing is, um, I think it's cause I'm tall. I, it was jacking my knees like against the, like the, I'm too tall for that thing. Cause it's, it, it's not yeah. comfortable for a tall dude. It, it was <laughs> snug, but there wasn't anybody there. I mean, come on. When do you yeah. get to ride anything at Disney three times in a row? No, no, said, no. Yeah. I, one, I was done, one and done. No, no. It's like, it was like, I'm, I'm on team. I'm on team Stephanie here. I know you record. are. I know. And I was well. like, that thing, that thing hurt me. Like, that one and the other ride that I would, wouldn't want to do more than once ever again, and it, thank God it's gone, was that Primeval World in uh, Animal Kingdom. I hated that thing. Oh, oh we've done that three times. In oh, oh, my God. No thing. Yeah, we've done that a couple oh, times. Oh, you guys. <laughs> you guys are masochists. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call those people that just like, the hurt other, themselves? <laughs> masochists. Yeah, the other good one was that rope drop and that back entrance. So we did that three times. We hit every single thing in Pixar Pier as a walk-on because there wasn't anybody there yet and rode Incredibles back to back or incredible coaster back to back yeah. see i awesome. do i do that there that wasn't anybody awesome. there yet <laughs> you see that's awesome i heard and that they just redid still that had the genie plus for later in the day so that was awesome winning there that backs i love pixar yeah. pier that's such a cute little area we even rode the little the little was, carousel with the funky little animals mm -hmm. whatever that is uh, we rode everything that what the uh the inside out emotions thing i mean it's it all it does is go up and go in a circle but that was great it, there was nobody there, and then suddenly you could just see, like, everybody who had rope <laughs> dropped from the front, like, they all came down, but we'd already done everything, so it was just perfect timing. 
an underrated track an attraction there. back there to me because I mean, you could do this at any like amusement park but i love the silly symphony swings because they play those like silly symphony songs from those old Walt disney cartoons and i just love it it's so cool i think oh we did that and yeah it's like up over the water like a beautiful view of the yeah. lake and everything yeah it was fantastic we just we i mean obviously disneyland how could you go wrong it's the original but we really like sort of the like i don't know the sort of old arcade feeling we really like dca too so Real quick, because because Pam Forrester actually, I didn't know where she was to be honest last week, but uh, saw on social media she was out at Pixar Place Hotel and doing all the social media stuff for all the the Pixar celebration that's happening out there this week. Um, what did you think of the hotel? Because it just you know got rethemed and reopened and kind of uh, renamed. What, what did you think of staying there? It was it was beautiful. It was so like. It was gorgeous. I mean, everything was brand new, nice and clean. They were still doing a little construction, so, you know, kind of early in the morning, like, you could hear them and stuff like that, but, you know, whatever. We were going to be up anyway. Um, They had a really nice, like, pool and sort of rooftop fire pit area, and they didn't have fireworks either night we were out there because it was too windy, but I guess they sync up the music, and there's a fireworks viewing sort of area up on the pool deck area which is pretty cool Mm -hmm. um and just the like little touches you know just the pixar lamp in every room and like we were looking at the pattern on the rug and it was the pixar lamp on the pattern rug and uh oh gosh the guy from soul was in the lobby playing the piano every night and that's so cool like little touches like my guy joe gardner (laughs) love that guy joe not scott gardner (laughs) (laughs) there you go that's who it is yeah, and like he's in this little nook, and we walked, you know, we were walking in, and we we're like, well, who is that? And like my family, like we all played the piano, we we're like, where is that coming from? And he's just right there, just planned, I mean, beautifully. And it was just, you know, a cool experience. It was just a nice little touch. I'm dying to see, I love so. Disneyland Hotel, but I'm dying to stay at this place because it's like so colorful. It's, it reminds me of like, a, I don't know, like a pop century kind of like crossover, like a Disneyland hotel slash pop century with all the vibrant colors and the characters. The lobby and- is like a complete 180 to me, like where it used to be. Like, I am so excited to stay there. Um, I really love what they've been doing there for sure. It's it's, it's cool awesome. looking. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, it was pop century is a good, good way to describe it. It was <clears> definitely <throat> those colors. It was bright. It was just like a fun, happy place. It was, it was awesome. It was a really nice place. Yeah, they've kind of they they did it. They're smart with what they did with that hotel because that hotel was really not getting much love, and now I mean everybody wants to stay there. And I I still got to eat at that restaurant that Scott's been telling me about because the menu at that restaurant was the maple something or other. the great great maple or great, something like that. Yeah, oh, there's a uh, restaurant there that's got a menu that's so, just made for me. Yes, go early or be prepared <laughs> to wait because that it filled up. <laughs> It's I mean, an all-day menu. Like, it's there. awesome. Any time of day, it's the same menu, which I, I really liked about that. Smart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sounds oh, good. There you go. Yeah, we didn't make it because just the, the way it was too long, we were too tired, so we just had snacks in the room. Um, mm. But, yeah, it was it was good. So, definitely two diff, wildly different but excellent Disney experiences this year. Well, hey, th- Stephanie, we appreciate the call, and uh, thanks. For, hey, especially thanks for, uh, you know, being a chaperone for those kids because those kids got to have – the opportunity to make some awesome memories and, uh, you know, couldn't do it without parents uh, going along for the ride and making sure everybody uh, stays clear of uh, clear of the law while they're down there. So good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, thanks guys. I, I love the show. So happy to get the call in. Hey, so, don't be you. a stranger. We appreciate you. <laughs> All right. Talk All right, to you soon. Have a good one. All right. Bye-bye. How about that? Mike, Mike, that was a great call. Did you see the comment from Kristen though about hoop to do? I did not because I'm trying to juggle all this. See, now, like, now we got another variable in here. So Kristen go said, Sky did my college program at the Luau and the tables and assignments were done with the hoop de do And yes, it's done by reservation date and party size, which is what I was saying on the trip report. I think, you're right. I, I think they really do like, all right, who's our first four person? They're going to get this front row spot because they booked it first. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I feel like See? that's how it is there. I, I thought that they were just like, you know, shooting darts i'd see i i would have maybe darts. like maybe i bribed kristen to say that, you know, <laughs> maybe you did i don't know i thought maybe they were shooting it's darts. actually a co-worker of mine. i have no idea all right we have four calls coming in at the same time we pick this one who is our next caller tonight hey what's happening mike it's adam from michigan adam how are you adam from michigan we are doing well uh how, 
How are things up in uh, Scotty G's? Uh, were you excited? Are you a football fan at all? Did, excited about Detroit? Yeah. No. I mean, you know, it's a big thing. I'm yeah, I can take it or leave it. Is what it is. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, Detroit looked good on TV. I can tell you that this weekend. So be, be <laughs> proud of be Motor uh, City. What's up? I got a question for you. As a former teacher, uh, for yourself. Pulling kids out of school, what are your thoughts on that? Because we have a, we've got a cruise planned for May. We're pulling them out for then. And mm-hmm. then we've got another cruise planned for September. And then another cruise planned for October. And we're going to have to pull Dude, them out of school. Please, I, so. I need to be your kid. I mean, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go on three cruises. <laughs> <laughs> you were good until you said the third cruise. Then I'm like, okay, wait a second. I might have changed my answer. Are you sure answer. it's not Adam from Florida? Like, this is Adam from Michigan. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I might have changed my answer here because I was, I was with you there for a minute. So so my, my, my daughter, she's four, and she's in like the young, you know, young fives or young fours. And my son, he'll be, he'll be in second grade. So it's like, you know, we're doing the wish for four nights. Then we're doing the fantasy for six, and then we're also doing um, we're doing the magic in May, and then we're doing the wish fantasy, and then we're also doing the um, next May. We have to pull them out again for the treasure. Okay, here, so, here, here's here's my thoughts on this. So the two of them are in May. Uh, said- yeah. So this May, and then next May, and then we're doing two in uh, September, October. September, not October. Okay. And here's been, and this is what I always told my parents, the parents of my students when I was teaching. And remember that I taught in a district where I taught in a very poor school district, very low socioeconomic district. These kids didn't ever, every once in a while, they'd have the opportunity to travel, not very often. And I told my parents, if you ever have the opportunity to take your kids somewhere to see the world, do it. Because they're going to always have a chance to learn and there's nothing that I'm going to teach them in my classroom that day or that set of days for maybe two or three days that I can't make up with them at some point, or they can't make up at home or they can't, you know, the parents can't supplement that. We can't work on a, on a, as a team to get, you know, just, the, just the important stuff, the skill that they might miss because right. there's a lot of the school day that they don't necessarily need. If there's like certain skills that are being taught that day, yes, we don't want them to fall behind. But most kids, the parent can help them maintain and also gain, you know, the few skills that might be taught during those days. But the thing is, opportunities to go see places like, I don't know where the magic's going or the, you know, to maybe go to like St. Thomas and experience that or the Bahamas or you know, just to see what the ocean looks like. I mean, for right. a kid, because I mean, some of my kids were getting to go on like a carnival cruise. I mean, for a kid from Missouri that some of my kids hadn't even seen the Mississippi River and it's like 20 miles from us. You know what I'm saying? Like the the, the concept of seeing a river was a big deal for a kid from, yeah. from St. Louis to see an ocean, like to be able to put perspective on like when we do maps of what an ocean looks like or a beach. Yeah. Like go, you know, like you, you got to take the ex- travel teaches you so much about cultures, about perspective. And you, you got to make those memories when you can. So absolutely. What I'm saying is do all four trips and just work it out with the teacher. Just tell the teacher okay. we're, we're a team here. And, and I asked about the time of the year. I'll be honest. Not much happens in May, like testing state, like standardized yeah. testing is usually over by then. And the teachers are kind of just kind of wait until the end of the year. Now, September is a little rough, but right you, can, you can make it happen. I don't know, Scott. Yeah. Well, well, let me ask Scott. It's kind of a third party here because you're you're not in this. What, I mean, I would. Agree. I mean, I, we pulled Emily out quite a bit, especially in that second grade, four to five year. That's kind of when we started going to Walt Disney World and cruising. So we did it a lot because we wanted to go. Like when it was easy for us to get off time work because sometimes the holidays were tough to get off work, so we had to go like on these off weird periods. And we just worked with the teacher, like Mike said. And I'll be honest, uh, Adam, we did a lot of like. Emily did a lot of homework on planes, <laughs> you know, like where it was still just, or at the airport, like when we had downtime, she would just get her notebook out or worksheet or, or whatever, and just kind of work on it. We would just ask and be upfront with the teacher. And I would say like 80% of the time they would have assignments. Sometimes they just weren't that far ahead, but you know, they would just tell us, don't worry about it. She'll catch up when she gets back. So I'm take the trip. I'm in okay. my, just take the trips. Yeah. Okay. Tra- travel good, teaches good so much. I, and I mean, your perspective from a teacher. No, the thing is, I mean, to me, and this is, again, every teacher can have their own opinion. Like, I'm not saying my opinion is better than any other teachers, but I always thought that if a teacher said, 
that a student should not take a trip with their family when they get the opportunity that it's it, that teacher must really think that their lessons are super like important, you know, and, and yeah. I didn't think that now, did I think what I taught was important? Absolutely. I thought what I taught was important because I value education or else I wouldn't have become a teacher. Like that's, that's why I was a teacher because everybody needs to be educated and that's, that's what I love to do. However, I mean, you only get so many chances in life to get to do things with your family, to travel like that. Like I never, I didn't go on a vacation with my family until like I did one the entire time I was home until I went off to college, you know, college one time. Yeah. Like I would have loved to have done that. It, and so it, you learn so it, much. It's a good outside. Point. Yeah. So travel teaches you That's more than point. books can. Yeah, absolutely. Do the trips. Cool. Yeah. I would good 100% deal. do it. I mean, it, and if you need me to write a note, just let me know. I'll write it for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying four different marking off four different ships in like a, a year span is like awesome. Dude, oh, killing, just throw that killing it. You know, and honestly, you, you said like, you know, just taking everything from traveling. I mean, this would be, I think they're going to be gold this, this cruise and um, this coming May. And they, they remember from every cruise, like one thing, something, whether it's a crew member or something from that trip. So, I mean, it's, it's awesome to see them kind of relive that and talk about it. So, well, well too, and know. what, what I, what I might, you know, for your, for your one child, the older child is what I might offer up to the, and this is what I've had my students do. And this is kind of a really cool thing. They can either use technology or not, but during the trip kind of do like a log, like it make like a, this is again, I quit teaching in 2017 to do this full time. So it's, it's been a minute. But I would have them create like a PowerPoint or like a Google slide presentation. God, I'm old. Like this stuff is so beyond like this is like <laughs> now I'd be like throw it into chat GPT Dude, or something. You know my, what I'm saying? Like we do this in my like line of work. So don't, don't well, so, <laughs> no, but like okay, stuff. so just like three hours ago though, because Pam's the vice president of the cheer boosters for, for next year. Like they're they're meeting with all the parents tomorrow night for their first meeting. And then I thought she was making a PowerPoint presentation. I'm like do not kill those new parents with the PowerPoint presentation. I'm like, close it. <laughs> so anyway, but I'm just saying, well, here, here's a good thing maybe to go to the teacher with. Have your child like make a little presentation, like a five minute thing of like mm. what they learned during the vacation. Like maybe the culture where they visited with some pictures of where they went, the foods they ate that maybe are different from back home, you know, just not Taco Bell, you know, like something that, it's native to where you visited, you know, pictures of what the actual cruise ship looks like. Cause these kids don't understand what a cruise ship looks like and yeah. then share it with the class. And the thing is your kid That's gets to point. get, yeah. they get to write, they get to research, they get to, and then they get to present, but also the kids in the class get an, ex they get to learn about the experience. Everybody in the classroom wins. And then the teacher gets to look good too. And you look good. So yeah, everybody wins. That's a great idea. See if the teacher goes for that. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good. Like uh, compromise. Teacher would be like, actually, can you just like take me next time? Is what the teacher <laughs> yeah, will say. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm no. excited for the treasure. I'm, I'm excited for the fantasy. We're going to look, um, look out, look out key at White House Point. So I'm oh, excited to do that. Um, I got to get there. See what that's all about. Uh, you're, you're doing better than I am. I don't have one booked for that yet. I got to get there. It looks awesome. I was just, you know, I just had to renew our annual pass. I had to renew three of them the other day. And oh. I was listening to Scotty talking about how I was sitting in traffic and I was listening to Scotty talk about how he didn't renew his. And I was like, oh, man, I was like, we almost, you know, it's just, it, I, I don't know. We've been to annual passes since 2013. So it's like. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. 20, it was painful. It. But you know what? I'm going to be back in November and I'll probably be buying a new one then. So it, it's just a brief yeah. hiatus. Yeah. They're expensive. Awesome. They are. They we are. Just, we just renewed I, them I just don't were... want to like waste six months. I mean, I, I mean, I would find a way, right, Adam? Like, like I would make it happen. Yeah. Like, I'd look for some good airfare out of Grand Rapids or Detroit and make a weekend trip down, you know. But now I'm just gonna like try to enjoy the Michigan summer and then just go down this fall. You know, that's just what we're gonna do. Yeah. But, but well, we're, we're Disney like, fans. Uh, Doesn't it make you though feel like you're like like you're missing a limb though when you don't yeah. have any? Oh yeah, I feel, like, I feel, we are so messed up. <laughs> we are so messed up. Like I don't want to lose my annual pass because I'll be like I'm not a whole person. I know. Like, I, like I'm ashamed of myself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're so messed up. Uh, <laughs> it's so we are we are weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> awesome well Adam, well, man, it sounds like you got too. some great yeah, trips like I'm super excited for, for you and the family those and... are gonna be a lot of fun <gasps> oh go ahead adam sorry 
Oh, I was just going to say, I, I really appreciate everything you guys do. I love the show. Listen all the time and um, keep up the good work. Hey, no, we appreciate it. And take that trip. Don't the last thing, don't feel guilty about it, man. You're doing the right thing. It's your family and you got to make those memories. And you'll be talking about those when, right. when uh, your son's at his wedding, man. So that, have yeah. fun. And it'll be, I'll tell you what, Scott and I can both tell you this. It's going to go so fast. I mean, I'm telling you what, our youngest, you know, both 16 now, you know what I'm saying? So they were yeah. your age, like, like a blink ago. So take the I, vacations you know and, you guys, and no joke, enjoy it. I, you guys were talking about it the other day and it's just, it's crazy just looking like how fast it is going. And it's like, oh my goodness. I just, it's just clipping by so fast. Dude, enjoy it. Seriously. It, it, it's, I mean, it's really like Mallory's talking about college visits and all that stuff. It's, it's, it's sick. So yeah, take it in. Just yeah. Hang on to it as long as you can, buddy. <laughs> right on. All right. Take care, Adam. Thanks for calling in. See you later. Awesome. Thanks, right, guys. Appreciate bye-bye. it. All right. Take care. Have a good night. Bye. All right. Michigan. Can I get on that? Like, we're, I'm from Michigan. Like, can I just. <laughs> like, yeah. Could you be like his floating teacher? I'm about to say, like, the I know, right? I'll just, like, be your teacher. Like, those kids are going to have better status than I am for sure. <laughs> dude, they're, I know <laughs> they're rolling, dude. They're going to they're they're be at Lighthouse Point. Like, yeah. come on now. What? All right, 407-413-9395. That's 407-413-9395. When a call drops, that means you can get in to be a part of the show. And if you disagree, call in. I mean, Carolyn says, you know, as a teacher, spending quality time with your family is important. I agree. I mean, it's kind of the name of the game. Like, it's it's harder for us now with Emily being a junior. Yeah, it does get harder. It's tough. So we try not to do more than, like, two or three days at a time because – I mean, she loves the trips, but like she comes back so stressed because, you know, you got AP calculus and all this stuff you're trying to catch up on and it's tough, you know? So, yeah. Well, Cause yeah, I mean, exactly. When, yeah. When you're taking those advanced classes in high school, I mean, like one day is, I mean, two days, three days can bury yeah. it quick. Yeah. Quick. And then, you know, with the way the technology is, she can see the assignments out there but and then that like stresses her out even more, you know, like, <laughs> like, Oh my God, we got these three lessons. Yeah. yeah, it's a shame our kids are like, but you know about- what? She does it all like in like two days. I mean, she's so smart, Mike. Like she catches up pretty quick, but that, I don't think everyone is like that necessarily. <laughs> I know that's good. <laughs> uh, we're lucky. It would take me two months. <laughs> or we just wouldn't do it and we get in big trouble at the end of the semester. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly. exactly. All well, right. I don't that. Yeah, exactly. No kidding. <laughs> all right. 407-413-9395. Uh, give us a call and you are on the phone. We could talk about anything you like in the Disney uh, universe here. But Scott, we were talking about your trip report on Friday. Um, wh- like, what did we leave off? Because you said there was a ton of stuff that we didn't get to. We're, we've been talking about yeah. it in the clubhouse over at brgspodcast.com slash discord all week. But, yeah. uh, you know, there's, there's, I mean, there's lots of meals we went to. Like, we did something we haven't done in years. Actually, someone in the discord did recently too. And I made a comment on that. Um, we like rope dropped Animal Kingdom, did like a half a day there. And then we went to Disney Springs and we ate at Deluxe Burger, um, it's, which is Lisa, funny because there's yeah. so many great options, right, at Disney Springs. But, I'll be honest. One of the reasons we went over there because we wanted to get the peanut butter chocolate chip cookie that was on special at Gideon's. So we didn't want to be there very long. So we didn't want to like have like a long meal because we wanted to get in the pool. It was hot. So we just, while we we're in Gideon's, we just mobile ordered deluxe burger, got our cookies and bam, walked over and it was ready. And it was really good. Mike, have you been? Because it had been years since we've been there. I've been a couple times, but it has been a couple of years since I've been there. And it's, it's I mean, it's, I love that place. But the yeah. problem is, there's, again, this is the same I say this all the time. There's so many good places to eat at Disney Springs now that I haven't been back in years, even though I love the place. I tend to yeah. go to Play Pig. Now, like, Splitsville's been my jam lately. Like, and we've been going to, um, uh, what's that place next to the, where the NBA experience was? Like, the sit-down oh. place, kind of like Applebee's. Not, um, you know, I'm talking about, it's Pam always talks about it. What's it? It's, um, oh, it's the poorhouse? Or... <laughs> yeah, the poor, not the poorhouse. What's it called? The poor, <laughs> city house. City, city city something yeah. city. oh my god Dude, we are the worst it? podcast right now the poor house it's something with city something with poor yeah <laughs> it's not a poor city i'll tell you i know that. there's one in the hotel where we stay in schaumburg for cheer yeah anyway I, I, we know what it is right i now. can't like, remember that's a tough thing. it's like the city, city works city there works. it is we city got works. there thank, thank you, you francois thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but like that's it's tough right and like honestly part of the reason we did it is because we knew we could mobile order and that's the only place you can mobile order at disney springs 
Um, I kind of wish you could see more of that, right? With the counter service. I mean, polite pig would just be a madhouse because oh my god, maybe it wouldn't. I don't know, but like no, it'd be I crazy. think lines scare people away because like those lines go through the park to the line parking garage half the time, it seems like. But like a chicken guy, like I think that'd be nice if you could yes. like do something there or like some of the like the, even like the stands, like the poutine stands or whatever. But um I've there's never... probably a reason why not, because there'll probably just be like madness for some of those. But like, but then but why you can not control that though, right? You can just control it, be like, all right, well, our mobile order window isn't from like two hours from now or something, you know? Like I mean they can control the quantity that can be mobile ordered but i'm just surprised you don't see more of it yeah i i agree i mean it seems like they're losing money like from a perspective of just a business right just have like one window that's mobile order only pickup only and mobile order your heart out i mean maybe it's a staffing issue i mean because i mean you'd be making a ton more food but you'd be making a ton more money i yeah i don't I don't understand that. I, I think there should be 10 different places. Cause like, well, one thing I've, I've always wanted to get poutine. I've never had poutine in my life and it looks so dang good, but I never get it because it, it's, it's like a tweener for me at Disney Springs. Right. When I go to Disney Springs, I usually want to get a full on meal and I don't want to get poutine. Cause it's like, I think I'll get full from it. I mean, it looks pretty filling. I mean, it's like a whole yeah. bunch of fries and a bunch of gravy and stuff on top. So I don't want to waste like a whole meal just eating that. I'd rather go get like, you know, polite pig or deluxe burger or splitsville mm-hmm. or city war, you know, but, and then once I eat all that, I'm not going to be hungry enough to eat poutine. Have you ever had poutine there? I haven't. Yeah, I, I have. I have. I did it one time and it was awesome. <laughs> it was so good. Actually, cause they have like unique flavors. I did this weird, like, it was like red sauce, like Italian red sauce, like on it and like, Dang. like a meatballs or something. It was like the strangest thing, but that like, it was good, so though. good. Oh my God. That's how it sounds like my stomach would be killing me. Like 30 minutes later, I'd be like, in and World like it was Disney. so like, busy, oh. Mike. It was one of those where like, I felt like I was in world showcase. Cause I, I, I swear to God, I ate it over a trash can. <laughs> like that's the only place I could find where I could eat it. And can you imagine? I mean, this summer when they have the drone show, Disney Springs, yeah. it's going to be yeah, especially on the weekend. We'll see. Hopefully, Ho- I mean, I, we've seen you and I have saw the drone show that they did like in 2017 or whatever. We've seen footage of the drone show like on YouTube videos or whatever at Disneyland Paris. Like they they know what they're doing, so we know it's it should be a spectacular show. I'm like, I'm man, I'm super jealous of that man. Like I'm not gonna see. All right, Adam, I gotta go get that annual pass. Yeah, exactly. I gotta see the drone show. We found the reason. You, well, hey, I mean, my family's not gonna actually. I don't need it. You don't need it because that, that's right. Yeah. I mean, my family's not gonna have one, and we're gonna see it this summer just because we're gonna be there for one night. So now I don't know if you saw this kind of tangentially this past uh, weekend. The Anaheim Angels had Star Wars night. You know, two yeah. miles down the road from Disneyland because we ran through this parking lot where they launched the drones from. I saw video footage of where the drones were sitting before the show. And I was like, oh, we ran exactly through that spot. That's where the cars right. were, the car show. And so we ran through there. Did you, you didn't see footage of that? It's in the it's in the clubhouse. I, I think I saw some footage. Like the Lions did something similar when they were Holy. in the playoffs. They did this awesome thing with like with the Lions roar. And it's like, unreal. Oh, it was like, unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Like Darth Vader was up there, dude. I mean, it, it's 360 degrees. Like Darth Vader, like turning his head. I mean, I, I cannot wait for this because it's way better than it even was the first like because it just was all college. drone shows yeah oh my just, god like, so cool yeah. it's gonna be amazing and then I, if I trying to remember like do they time did they tie music to like the old one but like if you can like put like a cool like background drop you know on it too like because like if you're showing Darth Vader you want to have like some music too, well no right? they, they this past did weekend they, this past weekend they've just installed a sound system all around Disney Springs in seating for the show are, oh there's seating big, too? I missed that it's okay. probably it's I. I'm sure it's going to be like a, it's going to be like a dinner package. You know, that's how it's going to go. This is going to be nope. VIP seating for like, this is going to be like fantastic dinner package. And I guarantee it's you. It's going to be cool for people that are staying at Saratoga even, because then you can watch it yes. on the other side. Too. I agree. I agree. It's going to make those rooms like bam. Cause I mean, a drone show, you don't have, I, it, I would assume, right. Drones don't have a front or a back. Like you, it's right. a, you could see them equally from 360 degrees. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. I would think so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a drone so expert. You could just, I mean, you might be able to watch them from Old Key West, maybe. Even. That's what you I'm know, thinking. Depending on how high they are. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's, it, But hey, yeah. I got an update from an, I don't know if we have another caller, but from a, one of our episodes last week, we recorded so many, but I did get the cabin for our Thanksgiving trip. I saw uh, that. Because you were yes. you were kind of radio silent there on the day you were supposed to get. We're still waiting on some calls. 407-413-9395. Give us a call, but go ahead. 
Well, I goofed up because it was like the day, well, just say it was April 23rd. I think that might've been the day. Like I was looking at a trip that started November 27th. So I was, I wasn't even in the window yet because it's like seven months mm-hmm. is where you need to be if you don't own there. So I couldn't even do it the day of. So I had to wait till Saturday, the 27th to get in on it. But yeah, I got our cabin, which I was nervous because it's over Thanksgiving, you know, it's like going to be a busy time, but we were able to get it. So we're super excited because I think it'll be a fun place to be over the holiday for sure. So, so are you planning on getting groceries and like doing Thanksgiving? Yeah. Like you're going to get a turkey? I don't, I mean, no, I don't think we're going to do like a Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> I mean, house. like how, how far are you going with this thing? I mean, come on now. You're coming if we are? You're going to be meet us there? It's my yeah. birthday. I mean. It, it's actually Liz's birthday this year. Thanksgiving is yours is the day before. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, I'd be yeah. tempted. But I, mean, I mean, basically it's your birthday. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah, so. it's, it's, it's in the neighborhood, but yeah. So yeah, it'd be sure. sweet. Yeah. But now, so you totally should though. That'd be kind of fun. You should at least get some kind of, uh, you know, yeah. you we're some... excited. It, it, it hurt a little to give a bulky West, you know, cause we haven't stayed there in a while and that's our home. It's kind of funny. It's our home resort. We haven't been there for a little bit. Part of that is because we went to Alani and used like all our points <laughs> for that. But I think we're really excited and it's like less than like a normal one bedroom, like at old key West. Now this room is going to be a little smaller. It's not going to have the washer and dryer, but I'm just excited. And it might be a one and done Mike. Like we might not like it, but as you know, Disney fanatics, like we are like, I think, I feel we have to try, try it once. Cause that's the one resort we have not stayed at. So the points for a new cabin, one of these new cabins is less than a one bedroom at old key West. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that that's surprising to me i thought it'd be it's more surprising to me too this, which is why we did it because like let's just say old key west was like 80 points that week or those dates we're looking at the one bedroom the, so the studio was 80 the one bedroom was like 164 it was more than double which it always is and it kind of bugs me a little bit like like we could get two studios and get more beds that way or whatever you know but but then you miss out like on the on the fridge and like all the like the kitchen area but the one bedroom cabin was 132 points so it was like it was like 30 40 points less we're like well why would we not do that and, and it's gonna be brand new you know so i wonder if the demand well i mean obviously the points are i set. think it's the size and the washer and dryer i think it could be the washer and dryer you think people too. are that 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 gung-ho on a washer and dryer i i i, I, I can't figure it out i don't I know why. either i'd see i but, love this kind of stuff. i love talking through these kind of things and like just i mean i'd love to have somebody to like or maybe it's just not as like it's attractive it, of a destination, it, you know, like, I, Oh, I'm going to go to the campground, you know, because yeah, I mean, it, it is, it, it's definitely an outlier, right? Because it, you got to, you're going to have to get a, I mean, you don't have to get a golf cart, but it, it makes the transportation is an issue with, in the cabin. Yes. And you know us, we normally rent a car yeah. and I believe maybe correct me if I'm wrong. I think for most of those cabins, you can just pull right up to it. Right. Like you kind of have yes. your own parking spot. I think right? so. Yeah. I'm pretty sure yeah. you can. There's like a, there's like a slip or yeah. like a, it's like a driveway. You know, right, because I, I think I accidentally went down one of those roads <laughs> to do last month, oh, no, and I was like, "Where are we?" Because <laughs> it's so dark. That it gets so dark back there. It it's does, wild. which is good. I mean, you're you're yeah. in a campground. You're yeah. you know, you're not in the city. And you're and, the, and the, you know me, we boat transportation is our favorite. So your boat ride away from the Magic Kingdom, like you got hoop to do, like, and then it's going to be the holidays. I mean, it's going to be Thanksgiving. You're going to probably see some like RVs like decked out. I feel like. Oh, yeah. hundred percent. A hundred percent. Cause yeah, yeah. I mean, think about it. Dude, Christmas starts in August at Walt Disney world. I mean, <laughs> exactly. you'll see some, uh, Cupid's, yeah. you know, like, but like, dude. but when you stay there, I feel like you got to do all the things, right? So what are you thinking? Mike? like, we got, you got to do hoop to do. I feel like, even though we just did, you got to do the, 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 the carriage ride around. The carriage the ride was one. Yep. Yeah. Got to absolutely think, do that. I think a golf cart is a must do. Oh, you have well. to do a golf cart. If you stay there and don't get a golf cart, man, I'm going to yeah. slap you. Come on. And I think another thing we have to do, because I think these cabins each have their own fire pit. I think we got to have a fire one night, right? Yeah. And you like, totally. Just do yeah. Your own fire. Cause I bet you can buy firewood like up at the at general the gift, store. At the store there. It's yeah. called the general. You can't call it the gift shop because this, this is the fort. This is the <laughs> campground. Me. You got go to it's gen- it's, it's the general store, man. And like, um, how about that store being like one of like the coolest ones? Like you want to talk about like some unique items you'll see at a Disney resort, like, cause they probably do have like wood there, you know, like firewood. Um, and I, I know we walked through there a bunch of times and then you got to go to the, um, I know it's not trails anymore. I wasn't the biggest fan of trails and honestly, but you got to go to like Crockett's Tavern or whatever yeah, yeah. and do like some counter service there for sure too. No, you got to, uh, and- and you, you also should probably because I don't know if they still do that. He still have the the Chippendale thing. The the I don't know. I don't think so because 
actually our, our friend Georgia, that was like his favorite thing to do, like Mickey's backyard barbecue or something like that. Or no, I think there's like a like a big group like um like uh, oh right, right. Jason's talking about the Chippendale yeah, the, the sing along. along. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Not yeah. not really, not necessarily a uh, yeah. yeah yeah that's the thing. But here's another great story from our trip that I didn't talk about. The night after Hoopty Doo, it was kind of sprinkling a little bit, and it was like. 845 happily ever after was at nine we're like ah like let's just not take the bus let's 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 watch the show and we had our umbrellas out like that's all right we'll just watch it it's just sprinkling a little bit then it started raining a little bit more and you know like that viewing area right like where the boat where the dock is yep there's like some some tables there we found an empty table that had an umbrella so we just sat down like we're covered like it's kind of raining a little bit and we had a, we were like spot on with the castle and we just watched happily ever after, like, oh. like outside sitting down, like, like that is a vacation moment for me. You know, like I'm not, and I could, I mean, I love watching on main street. I love dealing with the crowds. That's fine. I can manage that. Like <laughs> I just say, I love dealing with the crowds. That <laughs> Maybe that's an over exaggeration a little bit, a little but, taste, a little taste, but you know, my family's just sitting there. We just had a great meal and we're just wrapping up the night, watching Happ- Happily Ever After just quietly together um, in chairs. Like we're sitting down. <laughs> it was like the perfect close to an evening, I'll tell you. So we'll definitely be doing that when we're staying there too. So along those lines, we were having a discussion this afternoon over in the clubhouse, com slash discord. And if you're not there, you got to be in there because we have all these little side conversations with our listeners all the time. And Listener Laura just got back from a Disney fantasy cruise this week and was just talking about, you know, she had a great time. She posted some pictures in the discord and you know, it's a great thing is I can post pictures so easy videos, all that stuff. And so I was looking at him and I told her, I'm like, Oh man, you gotta be so, cause I'm like, cause I'm 68 days from our cruise. Like you can't pack. You can't even start making piles. Like you're too far away. But like, it was so far away that I didn't worry about it. But now like it's almost summer. So like we're traveling this, it's like I, I'm getting amped. And so like when For I saw sure. that, I'm like, oh, what was a fantasy like? And so I started asking, like, what did you like the best? Blah, blah, blah. So we got I talking. loved her response, man. It was like oh, a long dude. response. But so she great. named all like she came right at me with all the things like Mike Rahman likes. Dude, she came with cabanas. I mean, she came with like the the art of the theme ship tour, you know, mm-hmm. like all the things. But then she mentioned one thing because that brought me like the, these small moments is what kind of brings me home here. One of the things that I've never done on a cruise ever. And it's, I think it's cause I'm not a coffee drinker, but I've never gone into the Cove cafe and just like sat and just chilled. And, and so I'm going to do that. And it, plus it's a seven night cruise and it's not a podcast cruise and there's nothing wrong with a podcast cruise, but podcast cruises are busy. Like when we have a hundred of us, like, you're going like crazy. Cause like, you're like, when I'm with you, dude, we're, we're nuts. Like we are always doing something. Not that that's not a bad thing. It's just a different kind of cruise. Like when it's just going to be the four of us, like Pam doesn't want to be around me 24 seven. You know what I'm saying? Like if, if I say like, I'm just going to go like take my iPad up to Cove cafe and read, read a book on my iPad for an hour. She'll be like, peace out, bro. You know, the girls will be like, yeah. they'll be gone. Like the, the, I will not see them. So, I'm looking forward to that. Like, I, you know, I didn't realize like those little snacks in there are free, you know, like little treats, like the coffee yeah. isn't, but I don't drink coffee. So I'm going to try wake that. up so early. Like I would love to go there like early in the morning, you know, while everyone's just starting the day. It's so chill. Like you'd be on the back of the ship, see like a sunrise, you know, like, Oh man, like that, that is like the little things, you know, I, I love what you're saying there. Like those are, that's what makes vacations for me. Those little moments for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's just, you know, that's kind of, I think that's what I'm, and you're doing, I mean, I'm super jealous because you're doing, you know, longer cruise this summer, you're doing back-to-backs and I've done, you know, I've done back-to-backs in the past. We did 12 nights one time with a seven nighter backed up to a five nighter, um, Mm -hmm. one Disney then getting, well, actually it was a five nighter on Disney that backed up to a a seven nighter on Royal. And it was just having that much time on a ship, this allows you to feel comfortable like yeah like you get on the ship and you know i'm going to be here for a week so you can just like stroll around and just sit in a window and take it in like that's what i'm looking forward to the disconnecting from so good and then like i know it's not a podcast cruise and it i'm so sad we're not going to be on there with you because like 
I am too. My favorite, I, my favorite me, vacations is like cruising with you. Same. Because like, like we, we go hard. We have such yeah. fun. But I'm just yeah. like, I need to just chill. But you're going to make friends though too. Is That's the beauty thing of a cruise. Like on day one, like and you might see someone in passing. And then day two, you see them in the same spot the next day. And day three, like you guys know where you're from. You're like best friends basically. Like, and then you're sad at the end of the cruise. But like, it happens like phone numbers get exchanged so often. Like it's the people that make the cruises, the cast members too. Like you get to really know like your, your dining team and your, your stateroom attendants. And like, they just become family when you're mm-hmm. on a cruise, especially on a cruise like that long. And that, that is, it, it's, I mean, you say this phrase all the time. And I'm going to use it again, man. That's what it's all about to me. Like, you know, like it's so great. Well too. And I feel like I owe this to my girls, right? Because you know, they, they go on all the podcast cruises and, and we have such fun and they're, you know, they're friends with you guys, they're friends with the foresters and not a lot of our listeners, you know, they're, they're troopers, but you know, they, we don't ever have like, just like the, the normal vacation. <laughs> like they, we, we haven't had a cruise with just our family. And so it's going to be fun for, you know, just us four, the core four to, to go like, and go zip lining, you know, just us yeah. four in Tortola. Like we, so we is never going. I keep, I keep hearing Dude, you say four. Stop. Right. I don't know. It's well, so <laughs> here's the deal. So we got to, okay. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Okay. If Paige, Paige still has, she's, Maybe she's still yeah. a maybe, dude. We're 68 days out, so I've already paid she be maybe at this point. That's uh, crazy because we're in penalty. But here's the deal she's gonna tell me by next weekend because I'm gonna make her tell me she's coming home next weekend for but she has to be paid for at this point. Oh, she's right? totally and paid for yeah, That's why yeah. we are, yeah. Oh, she's been paid for forever because I mean, transfer it to me. I mean, no, no, <laughs> right. so yeah, right. So, yeah. uh, but you can transfer it to someone, I think that's right? exactly yeah. it. And yeah. we have a player to be named later on deck that's already got the airfare paid for. So, her co- Mallory's cousin is going okay. with us. If she can, oh my god, go. like if I was Mallory's cousin, I find a way to like break well, no. Cage's leg or something. So, here, <laughs> like, here, me okay. on that shit. you, you want to know the worst part of this? Here's the worst part. Here is the worst part. <laughs> Mallory, I've been telling Mallory she could bring a friend on this cruise ever since before we booked it. That's okay. So we booked a family veranda, right? That sleeps five. I've been telling her, you can bring a friend this time. What? Cause I told cause Paige used to bring friends to Walt Disney world forever ago. We always talk about it. She's never brought, she brought a friend once. I'm like, fine, we'll get a family veranda that sleeps five. You can bring a friend. She never like decided on all my friends are going the same. Cause everybody has to go the same week. Cause it's said, week. Like, cheer, everybody, everybody, everybody for cheers off. off that one week. So everybody goes on their family vacation. So nobody can go because everybody's going with their family the same week. So last week she springs on me. Can Zoe go with us? Her cousin, she's 15. She's a great kid, like super fun, super quiet. I'm like, I've been telling you, yes, she can go. So I called to get her added. Ships at capacity. Now, so I don't know if you know, you probably know this, right? You can have room in your stateroom. But you can you can still not be able to add somebody to your stateroom if the lifeboats are at capacity in your part of the ship. Yeah. So I knew this, but I just didn't think that our cruise was this full. Like I just wasn't paying attention, and I I mean I I really wasn't worried about it too much. But I called like oh no we're at capacity. I'm like you are kidding no I'm like are you serious. So yes, so Zoe. That's not gonna be a full cruise. Man. Oh, it's packed. I mean, so like, if you, you find want, out the whole, so they're like, like you know, all the cheerleading so, teams are on there. And no, so they come back with. Well, I mean, if you want to go to concierge, they could add her to concierge. I'm like, dude, like it'll more than double your fare. I'm like, oh, I'm like, you, I, I'm a travel agent. Uh, yeah, that's not happening. I mean, uh, I don't own the agency. I'm just a peon down here. So. She's right now a player to be named later. And it's all dependent on if Paige is taking her basketball team to Europe. And she keeps telling me she doesn't know. I'm like, Paige, dude, if you're taking a whole basketball team to Europe on an exhibition tour, it is, it is almost May. You cannot tell me you don't know if you're going this summer in July to Europe with like 30 people. Come on. Man. You have to know by now. Well, we're not sure. It's a tough call. Like in Mallory shoes. Cause obviously she wants to, she wants to cruise with, with her big sister, man. They, that's her sister, you know? And like, I know she doesn't see her as much anymore, but she's cruised with her so many times. It could be kind of cool for Zoe to have like a new experience, you know, get the, yeah, she's never been I'm on assuming a Zoe hasn't been on a cruise. Oh before, no, right? never. Like, and she's, she's a little spooked out by the ocean and all this stuff. Like we were already talking her through like yeah. showing her videos and stuff. 
So yeah, she's a total. This is like one of kid. Pam's like sisters' kids, or yeah, this is Pam's basically sister's kid. Yeah, yeah so okay. yeah, but and it would be a hoot, man. It'd be so fun. But I mean, I want Paige to go because right. I know like, that's the thing, but you want Paige she, to go too. Well, I mean, because Paige is gonna be like my right hand man at like tequila and margarita tastes and stuff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. Well, apparently I can't even like book a ship because like you're at capacity, so oh, I yeah. can't even get a stateroom. No, you're not getting this on this boat, concierge. dude. Nobody's getting on this boat. I'm just saying this boat is uh, filled to the brim. So wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, but that that's, that's where we stand. I mean, either way, it's gonna be cool because like. Paige gets to go. You got your wing. Right. You got your right, wing right. lady with you, and then but Zoe then gets gets her shot at. Well, I mean, because I mean, be really my, nice my wife Zoe. Pam is my wingman too. Like she's she's <laughs> for sure gonna be there. Like it, yeah. she signed up for all the tastings too, but she'll just scold me. Like Pam, you know, Paige will encourage <laughs> me. You know, so <laughs> it's weird. Paige is more like me. <laughs> yes, exactly. She'll be the surrogate yeah. Scott. So. Yeah. Yeah, Dude, I'm excited for your cruise though. Like cruising, I mean, uh, I think Tanja just says she's never done a cruise, or or no, she's done plenty. Her husband just doesn't. Like I, th- she has to go alone. I think a BR guest podcast cruise is the way yes. to go because you're gonna have so many friends on those. And we are oh. still talking about still for twenty five a five nighter. We're looking at a couple of options. So Pam just disappeared again. She had a media thing, so we are still working on it. But it's just hard to get her <laughs> nailed down. But we are gonna we are gonna either yay or nay on that and let you know asap and garen over on instagram is asking have either of you taken a disney cruise out of galveston i have not but that's where you can get really good deals mm-hmm. all right so real quick i think got, our good buddy uh dennis has taken a lot out of or maybe not a lot but i think he's done galveston a few times we have one last call and we're gonna get this one in because uh i was gonna say something at the end of the show it's Wade up in Nebraska, and I just want to say we're thinking of everybody up in Nebraska, down in Oklahoma, Iowa this weekend. I talked about it on Mike in the Midwest. Rough weekend with all the tornadoes, all those that are affected. We are thinking and praying for you guys and hope you recover quickly. But, Wade, what's going on? Well, thanks, Mike. Yeah, it was a crazy day. You know, the fortunate thing is there's been, um, I mean, it's it, there's been a lot of damage, but as far as, like, in, injuries and fatalities, there haven't been a lot of that at all so that's a good thing it was um i think it was there's never perfect timing for a tornado but the fact it was during a day the day and people had so much warning all the warning systems really saved lives right. and that's you know the amazing thing i mean possessions and things can be replaced but you know people can't exactly. so it was a crazy day though i hadn't been one of those here for a long time so but thank you yeah um yeah tough day for a lot of people fortunately we're all okay and uh, it skirted right around Lincoln, but hit Omaha pretty hard and west and suburbs of Omaha. But uh, and then just outside of Lincoln, too, there was quite a bit of damage. So anyway, it was it was it was tough. You know, spring weather in the Midwest, right? No kidding. Yep. Hopefully we can. I, I can't imagine just whole communities, you know, just taking the hit. So hopefully everybody yeah. can rebuild. The, the, you know, the thing is, I saw on Instagram just this morning, though, how communities come together. You know, people that had their houses destroyed, they're out there helping other people, yeah. even though their house has been destroyed, you know, they're, they're, they're not worried about their house. They're out helping neighbors. It's, it's an amazing thing. You know, there's a funny thing, funny thing. The Nebraska fight song says we all stick together in all kinds of weather and it couldn't be more true right now. Um, you know, when tragedies happen in communities, that just happens to be in the, in the Nebraska fight song, um, which I guess is somewhat ironic, but, uh, that weather was the cause of, of such devastation, but you're right. People do stick together and brings people together. And, and that's, um, so that's a good thing too. But, uh, but yeah, but thank you. appreciate it. And like I said, there's a lot of people that are, that are hurting. We're, we're good and, and all that, but a lot of people are not, but, um, yeah, you rebuild, you get back, you get back to what you had and, and, um, yeah, humanity, humanity comes through in the end. So that's absolutely good. Bigger and better. All right. So, so hey, you had a question yeah. though in the chat. Is that what you're calling about? Possibly. I don't, we, we yeah, got... it is actually. And it's funny that Scott and Scott and I haven't even talked about this. I've been I looking know. at the cabin. <laughs> Go ahead. Scott, what are the chances? Say? Yeah. Yeah. So, what intrigues you about the cabin? Well, I, I, they're available for wine and dine, and I've got Boulder Ridge booked for eight nights. Um, so, or is it nine nights, something like that. But I look at the cabins and they're available too. And like you said, they are not that much more than a studio as far as points go. Um, I think they're 20 points during the week, 25 on the weekend, if, if memory serves me correct. And at Boulder Ridge, that's not much, that's not much more. So I thought that's true. Cause that's, a that's a good point. Cause I was comparing to Oki West, which is kind of like one of the lower studios. So I was, mm-hmm. yes, yeah, so I was kind of doing 
like the bit like the biggest comparison you would almost see that's right i didn't even think about that that's a good point yeah some of the studios you know grand floridian polynesian uh the more expensive studios but boulder ridge is not cheap as studios either it's a little less than those but um yeah it's it's not much less so i thought okay maybe i do this and then i, I thought wait a minute I don't know what it would be like getting to a race morning at, you know, three 30 in the morning, um, staying at wilderness, you know, wilderness lodge. A lot of times the bus swings over there and I've missed the picture mm -hmm. for him because I'm like, okay, we're sitting at the bus stop now at, uh, at Fort wilderness. Um, and there's very, seems to be very few people that get on the bus there. Uh, and then dropping off as well too, on the way back after the race is when I'm headed back to wilderness lodge. But, I don't know if anybody's done it. Do you have to get on a bus to then get on the bus to get on the race? And if that's the case, I don't really want to do that. It's three in the morning. One bus is enough, right? So, yeah. My I answer, I do have I an answer for really you, know sort of. Located. Yeah. You have an answer? I sort of, I, I sort of have an answer, Wade. Like, I don't have a direct answer, but mm -hmm. I've seen this question come up so many times in the lizards. And I think and there's mm -hmm. a great search field, like on the Facebook. Like, I bet you if you search, like, Fort Wilderness bus, like an answer will pop up. Yeah. Um, so I would go there because I've seen it asked and I don't think it's that bad. I don't think you have to do like the bus to the bus to the bus, like you're thinking. Um, <laughs> but I could be wrong. I very well could be wrong. So um, I know it's been asked so many times and I, it didn't seem like it was that painful from of an answer from what I recall. Cause I would love for you to say. So cabins. what do you do though? So say you, so you walk out of your cabin and then do you take a, <laughs> where does, where does the run yeah. Disney bus pick you up? Uh, see, that's the thing. It probably picks you up at like the main spot, yeah. right? Like where, like where you, yeah. where, yeah, where like where the parking lot is, I guess. Off. Yeah. Out front, right. out front, right? Yeah. Like at yeah. the, what's that? The settlement or something it's called or the, I yeah. think that might be it. Cause I mean, they're those big the, motor the stables coaches. are out there, right? Yeah. 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 Out in that area. Yes. Yeah, so I, I guess where the whole cabin is way back, then like, what are you going to do? Walk in the dark all the way up there? Like, ugh, I don't yeah, know. See, I, I'm not doing this over a race weekend. I just don't think so. Right. It, it just, it, it just seems like you're right. tempting fate. It would just make me not <laughs> sleep. I was well. just imagining like, you know, yeah. Walking and, and trying to figure out, do I turn left or right? And right. It's dark. You get your phone flashlight on and you're like, you're totally oh, just I'm going, like, I'm know? getting, I'm getting nervous for you right now. Just thinking about it, dude, it's April. Like I can't, I, I mean, they're cool and everything, but I would not do this over a race weekend. There's too many variables. No way. I know. Cause the bus driver could get you lost anyway. And like, you're already way out there. No way. No way. They get lost coming from pop century. <laughs> I got, I got lost from Pop Century to Marathon Weekend 2020. <laughs> uh, and he took a wrong turn and ended up at Coronado. I'm like, this is not the right way, and I'm not a bus driver. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, and then they, they were delaying the start of the marathon, if you guys remember. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and people were getting off the bus and running. But, yeah, that's I know. It's just I, – I, I'll, I'll search on the lizards because there's got to be a good answer to this. But, you know, I started looking at a map even today, this morning, and I'm like, and you could be in this cabin over here and then you got this loop and you have to get out to the main road and then you got to get down. I guess you could walk it if you kind of, like I said, you knew. And that's when I started going, I'm not doing that. You know, someone's going to run out from the bushes at three, three thirty in the morning. And I'm trying to get to a race where I can go run a half marathon. It sounds, yeah, like you said, Mike, I'm getting anxiety talking. About yes, this. seriously. <laughs> because I mean, think about it. I mean, it's three in the morning, like the deer and everything are going to be up and out and, you know, snacking, who knows, like alligators. I mean, it's, yeah, I know. No, don't do this. I, I get anxiety. I get anxiety walking down the hallways from Wilderness, you know, Wilderness Lodge to get to the yeah, bus and hope that there's a bus right when I walk out the front door. I don't have to sit there and wait for the next one. You're not supposed <laughs> to be walking around for Wilderness at 3 a.m. I mean, like, sun up, like, 5 o'clock. Like, that's when that's when it opens. Like, God, that's when God intended you to be out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, could make for a great story, I guess. Yes, right? it could, yeah. <laughs> if you do it, make sure, like, Scott, he's the famous vlogger now. Make sure you got that tape rolling. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, oh, you have to come record this and we'll figure out how to get to our bus <laughs> at three in the morning. <laughs> Be on the vlog. Uh, anyway, I I, I'll, I, I'll try I want to you to do it out. though. I, I, do I, I, I we do we do need it for research purposes. Come on, Wade. It would loosen him up, dude, if a deer starts chasing him at like two forty eight in the morning. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? what I it's not against marathon week. I mean, how many races are you yeah, doing? I've been chasing the woods. Are you are you doing the ten k and the half? I I am. I signed up for for both. And so, so it's yeah, only two it's, races. Uh, Come on, what what what's the problem here? It's two and a half if you stay there. 
What's that? So it's two and a half races if you stay at Fort Wilderness because you're going to be doing that loop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so maybe, you get a, maybe you get a medal, a medal for the loop to the loop, right? Loop to loop medal. I don't know. Somebody I'm sure is listening or going to listen and go, I've done it before. I, I love to do oh, it. Oh, totally. Because like I said, I know they stop and we drop people off there. And I even thought after the marathon this year, I go, oh, I wonder if they, they have to now walk and then wait for another bus to get back to, you know, I, I, that, I wouldn't want to do that either. But I don't know. Back, back in my younger, answer somewhere, right? back in my younger and stupider days, I used to do the five k before the five k. This would have been perfect. <laughs> I remember when you did that, Mike. I was an, I was an idiot. Around, uh, I was left late. Well, yeah, because I wouldn't, I wouldn't film a circle on my five k day. Otherwise, on my Apple Watch, I was an idiot back then. Oh, <laughs> no. dumb. Yeah, oh, no five k before. <laughs> stupid, stupid Apple Watch. Uh, anyway. Anyway, it's a good question, though. So we got to get some feedback. So, again, come over to the Discord and let us know if you've stayed there because this will be, I cannot wait to see this thread going this week. <laughs> this will be a good one. I'm going to go check it out right now after when we get off the phone. Yes, <laughs> so, absolutely. All right, guys. Well, all right. That's awesome. all I got. Hope you all guys right. are, have a great, uh, great rest of the weekend. Yep, you too. The tell, the fam- tell the family we said hello. I will. All right, take care, guys. All right, see, see you, Wade. Have a great week, Wade. All right. Can you great see question. It's a great question. <laughs> yes, yeah. it's but visually, like I'm picturing it, right? Yeah. You remember like, when um when there used to be like host resorts for Run Disney? Yes. Like not even all the like you, I can't imagine Fort Wilderness was ever a host resort, no, right? Because no I, way it would have been. I stayed at Animal Kingdom Lodge one time for like uh the Tower of Terror 10 miler, and it wasn't a host resort, and I had to um I had to take us my only ever cab ride to the start line. And dude, that guy was crazy. He uh he drove like he 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 drove up on the sidewalk because like I was late to the race. Like because he couldn't he couldn't figure it out. He drove up on the sidewalk. I gave him a fat tip, but he got me there like so I didn't miss the race. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that was crazy. Cause you had that, to be cra- careful. that was a crazy time, right? Where like I think Reggie brought it up recently. He's like, hey, like are are there what are the host resorts for Princess Weekend or whatever? I'm like Man, they haven't done that in years, but you had to like do your homework, right? Like you didn't want to pick a resort where the bus wasn't going to go to. No, they picked thankfully, like like half of each like category or something. Yeah, thankfully they all are now because like now just they probably got a lot of complaints about probably from people that were doing the same thing as you, like taking like Ubers from Animal Kingdom Lodge. That's probably it must have been before Uber because I took a cab, like a yellow oh, it cab. cab. It was, it was, oh, a, it was right. like a cab cab. Yeah, it was like yeah. a. Like a taxi cab. Like so this is probably like 2014 or something in there. 2013. That's crazy. Dude, it was a long time ago. I didn't know what yeah. I was doing. Because I, I I seriously didn't know. Like I went out to the front and I was yeah. just like, I gotta get to the race. Like, <laughs> You're you like, like taxi? And then, no, that's what they said. They're like, Would we like would would you like us to call you a cab, sir? I'm like, I guess. <laughs> They're like, Okay. And like, he was like, the, meter, the meter runs double yeah. when I'm driving on the sidewalk. <laughs> Because the race started Wide World, it was like a point to point race, right? I yeah. think it started Wide World of Sports and ended so, like at Epcot or something. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, what am I doing? That's crazy. Yeah, that was crazy days. Anyway, good, good show, good show Mike. That was good fun. Stuff. Yes, and so so I got a good idea for Friday show. I don't know who's going to be on it this Friday, but I think on Friday we had a thread going, and I want to see what you think real quick on this, for like thirty seconds. Did you see that thread where we were talking about? You did because I put a poll up about it. Whether when oh, you're yeah. making an ADR, what drive? Because I think we have two different opinions on this. What drives the decision more? Is it food quality or atmosphere or experience of the restaurant? And then we're going to kind I mean, of I dive bo- into. I want both. <laughs> I, you do want both, ideally, yeah. but one yeah. might outweigh the other. So we're going to just go through a bunch of restaurants maybe on Friday, yeah. and say, like, so say like Grand Floridian Cafe. That one I would say food is greater than experience or environment, right? Would you say that? Yeah. You go yeah, there for the food? I would say that. But like sci-fi, you definitely go there for the experience, not the food. For sure. And so we'll just kind of go yeah. around like that. Um, maybe we'll do that Friday. We'll talk. But sometimes I think I do have some doubles where like. Where do you think it's like, not, not for everyone. I think like, I think Marcuzzi's, I mean, that atmosphere not, might be for everyone, but like, I love that. Or like Topolino's, like, I just love being in that restaurant might not necessarily be for everyone though. You know what I mean? I think you're talking more like 
like the sci-fi or the space 220 you see like, i'm more of like a, like a fun up, i'm like, like see though neither one of those are like fun fun like i'm thinking yeah see that's like, fun to me <laughs> like, see, that's, not, that's like not fun that. like you just gotta get dressed up like i i, see, I, I, I like get what you're saying stuff, i know you yeah. that, see that's and that's cool like that's that's yeah. what everybody likes like i'm more of like a like i love sand and gel in like i like the smoking period yeah yeah, that's, it's, yeah, I think that's a great fun. conversation. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to have that. So we may do that on Friday. They'd be kind of fun, but uh, yeah, we'll see. So, all right, we're going to jump out of here because the show's getting a little bit long, but we'll be back Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Monday's show that's coming out on the feed here in less than an hour if you're listening live. It's a great story. Twenty. It's actually two trip reports. It's one to Walt Disney World and a first trip to Disneyland. It's a couple that was celebrating their 25th wedding anniversary. They met at the Disney store. Working at the Disney store. Remember the Disney store? The old yeah. mall store? Are those still around? We're having that debate. I can't remember. Are they still? Do you still have those? I don't think so. No, we don't. And like, I, I, I don't even know what the status of the Disney store is. Because sometimes they're closing. Then they're like in Targets. And then like, oh, we're yeah, going to come in back. Targets. Or we're going to rebrand on a different yeah. name. They were like, like in Children's so, Place or something. Yeah. I don't know. So yeah, yeah anyway. They, they met at What's a Disney What's so store. weird, Mike? I'm listening. Because you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm behind a lot. You know? Yeah. And like, I was mowing the yard the other day. I was like, oh, let's fire this up. And it's from like. I don't know, May of last year. And there's a question from this couple that met at the Disney store. Um, they had like a listener question. I wonder if this is them. Like, doing the trip before. like how ironic is that? Like, cause when you said that, I'm like, Oh, weren't you just talking about them <laughs> could, on the podcast could it was be. From last year? Yeah. Who knows? Maybe they, there was the time they said, okay, oh, I get in the queue to do a trip report. Cause that's Maybe. how long it takes. <laughs> it took them a year to get there. It takes forever. Cause I'm telling you, I never turn anybody away. I'm like, you might just have to wait a little bit, but you can always do a show. But yeah. So we talk about that first trip to Disneyland. So it's in the backstory of how they met at a Disney store. So that's, that's kind fantastic. of fun. Tanja says they are still open. So that's cool. Uh, but, uh, so we have that on Monday, list your questions on Wednesday, Friday, we'll do the, uh, restaurants probably. So we'll do that. Don't forget magic for less. We'd love to help you plan your great Disney vacations that really help support the show. So just swing by the magic for less.com mention the show on the quote form. It'll come to me and we'll work together on that trip. Also, please use our Amazon affiliate link, be our guest podcast.com slash Amazon. And thank you to our patrons. You guys make all this possible. If you support us, just $5 a month, you get a bonus show. It's called Mike in the Midwest. And today we put out another episode of Mike in the Midwest. Comes out usually every Sunday for our subscribers over there. And this one was called Grandpa's Garage. And uh, just talked about all the memories that I had in uh, my grandpa's garage. Man, that was his That was his um, man cave kind of place like before it was cool, like in the 70s and 80s. And looking back, that was kind of where I got to really know my grandpa. Like that was just where he went and tinkered. Because again, in the 70s and 80s, there were no iPhones or iPads or, you know, 300 channels of streaming TV. Like when when there wasn't anything on TV, he just went out to the garage and tinkered and he fixed things for everybody in the neighborhood. Um, so we talked about that on Mike in the Midwest. So if you want to get in on that, come over patreon.com slash be our guest podcast. Give Scott a follow on the social media at Epscott, E-P-S-C-O-T. Scott, how's, how's the vlogging going? Anybody, people check that out or know? Or we have a, we're going to have a new episode probably come out this week about our Starbucks mug collection. Um, so it could be kind of boring, but it's kind of fun. It gives us a chance to talk about old memories. And it's for me to work on some techniques. So I'm trying to do some picture in picture. We're like, nice. we're sitting at a table and then I have like the mug, like kind of rotating, like in the corner, just trying to play with some effects before we really start getting into it. Got to so get ready before we go to Europe exactly so it should be fun i mean it's more for us but if you want to check it out absolutely i won't say no to that so. all right so check that out Ep scott uh and i'm also be our guest mike in the same places uh twitter instagram and threads so give us a follow over there and we'll have the next show next sunday night seven o'clock eastern six o'clock central join us tons of people tuned in tonight we'll hopefully do that again next sunday night and again the place the conversation never stops is our clubhouse be our guest podcast.com slash discord we'll see you over there all right we're gonna jump out here we'll be back again all the time this week so for scott i'm mike wishing you a great sunday night or thursday here on the feed take care stay safe stay healthy and we'll see you real soon you've been listening to the be our guest walt disney world trip planning podcast if you have questions comments or would like to be a guest on the show please visit our website at be our guest thanks for listening and we'll see you real soon <laughs>